Good evening, everybody. Good night. Or, no, good evening, I think, is what you say when you say hello. Talking Dirty with Maestro. Maestro. Not just numbers. Not just stats. It's, it's about, about what, what they mean. mean. Maestro. <laughs> We're gonna throw this into a movie. See, is that better for you? Educate me. I'm going to send you the information. Talking dirty. You got it, you got it, you got it, fam. Who's talking dirty with you? Boy. Me. Let's go and chop it up. It's like a little bad boy action. Uh, yeah. Victor Noggle goes to uh, bad boys. New coach, new scheme, new system, new everything. So it's all going to be new, right? We sort of have an idea of how Coach Williams handles things. He's really good at keeping everything in a straight line. And I think in that, how he allows his freedom, allows his players to play with a little bit more freedom. That says what? That means coming into a scheme like his, you need to be not only flexible, you need to know exactly and execute exactly in what coach's principles are. I think Victor can do that. I think he has the sort of game that will take advantage of those intermediate spots on the floor that seem to open up with uh, Coach Williams' offenses. Developing a strong mid-game, developing a strong understanding of how to utilize the mid-game would help him. And I think service the team as well, too. It'll be good to see bad boys having a more consistent approach this particular year. I think a lot will benefit from uh, a new system, a new look for everybody. I see winner, 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 chicken dinner. And the idea of how we see a team like this and we're sort of prognosticating from what was done before, that prognostication is done certainly in pencil, not pen. Certainly done from a situation that these, this new mixture, if you would, will need some attention. Probably need some growing time too. Hopefully, there's enough time before season two to see that happen. Uh, Victor, in my opinion, is a very flexible player, a lot of room for growth. Hence, I mentioned the mid range game. But also in a situation where what system will he end up in? Which system the team the team ends up running under Coach Williams is going to be really cool to see how he's utilized and how he's able to insert himself into the will of the principles to see if everything is able to play through and go through as hopefully we can see it can, right? Um, Bad Boys is such a team that gave you and took away last season there'll be games where you will go whoa and then games where you'll go whoa i don't think that's going to be the case this year hopefully there's enough time for the team to coalesce around the system consistency is the key look at all the teams that finished at the top of their divisions and their conferences last season and not saying that bad boys wasn't one of the better teams you just never really got a chance to see them completely on the path of what we thought the team could be, right? What we thought the team could sort of stand for in terms of how does this particular franchise look to move forward? Now I think we get a chance to see. I think we get a better look at it. And it's going to be fun. So good luck, Nagel, Victor. 
Good luck, Coach Williams. Can't wait to see what you all put together there, Coach. Can't wait to see how this is going to work out. What do you all think about it? How do you feel about it? Is this password worthy or is it going to be, eh, I see more of the same. You let your boy. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel about it. Thank you for checking out this half. Let's hit it on the other side, fam. Thank you for, for listening, listening to, to The Maestro. Maestro. Want to get involved? Bring, Bring it. it. Drop in Discord.gg slash SimWorld Hoops. If you have the brain, brain, join as a coach. If, if you, you have the game, game, join as a player. See, See the, the game, game. be the, the game. game. Now, back, back to, to the Maestro. Maestro. Sorry. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> what up, what up, what up? Welcome to this half. Talking dirty with Maestro. We're going to stay on the theme of low post offense as queried by Mr. Trey Hyman, chairman of my dirty, dirty board. Let's build on the principles we talked about. So remember, base principles come from rebounding. If I'm the taller player, where's the ball? Shoulder, height, and above. Shorter player, chest height and below. Hang with me on that one. We talked about the whole idea of you look down for feet. So you look down, you see where your feet are, but you have to know where you are on the post in order to know how to make your most effective move. So let's talk about another move you can add to this. Same position on the floor. I'm back, back, back to the rim. And I am on the right side of the bucket, which means the the bucket is to my left and I'm being straight up guarded. So I'm being flash guarded by a player. Let's just say for the sake of argument, even though for this argument, it really doesn't matter. Let's just say that the player is taller than me. That player has complete leverage on me because they can shift with me if I go left or if I can go right. What do you do? You feel for the weight. If they have their forearm on your back and it's square, you feel for the weight. And how you do that is now when I when I when I secure the ball, I look down and see are they squared up? In other words, are their feet even with each other as they're as they're holding me or guarding me? Or do they have are they quartered with their feet? So in other words, their left or their right foot is forward closer to me and the other foot is obviously behind that foot. Here's how you handle this move or one way to handle this move, depending on your on your athleticism. Same position on the floor. I secure the ball. I look down and the player has me squared up with their elbow in my back or a forearm in my back. Totally legal. I look down, I see that their right foot is closer to my feet and their left foot is quartered back. In other words, behind. My move is going to be to my right. Again, I'm going against the foot that's quartered. Their right foot is behind, is, is right next to mine or, or right behind me and their left foot is back. I'm going to spin to my right. Why? Because I want to spin off off of their weight leverage and I want to make them react. But here's how I'm going to spin. When I secure the ball, both feet on the ground, I am going to dip step with my right foot. Their right foot's behind me. I'm going to dip step with my right foot, placing their foot now between my legs. There's a reason I'm doing this. And in that same motion, turn aggressively to the basket. Why? They will not be able to leave their feet to block that shot without making contact with me. I get the foul, and if I'm violent enough, I get an and one. Again, we always talk about leverage, right? I'm guarding up. Even if the player is super athletic, you have a chance to make this happen if you move with the, if you move with intention and move with purpose and you move with violence. 
again, back to the basket, my defender, right foot up near mine, court it with his left foot, left foot toward the, toward their back. I, I deep step almost straight back with my right foot. Same time I turn and I'm going to the rim. No dribble, no dribble. Not putting the ball down. And I'm going to extend myself. And if I'm not close enough to rock the rim, I'm close enough where I could drop shot it into the rim. But either way, by making that move against their weight, I'm putting myself in a position that they cannot move without making contact to me, with me. Now, let's take that one step further. Let's say it's the other way. Let's say that it's the other way that they are now squared up with me, opposite feet. So left foot by my feet, right foot quartered toward, toward the baseline, what would be the baseline from where we are on the floor. Doing that move into the paint is a lower percentage opportunity. But if you have the hops, again, you have to know your game because there's, there's no square rule for everybody. But if you have the ups, or if you're just willing to be violent to the rim, you can do that now. Just understand that you got you might have help side coming. As soon as you get that ball, you have to make that decision right at that moment if you're going into the paint. Because if the other defense is following principles and, they, and they're following help side, they're on their way to you. So that means you can't catch it, look down and think about it. It has to be catch it, look down, react, move. Now, if you do it into the paint again. You might have to do one dribble just because there's a greater distance, because there's a greater arc from where you are on this part of the floor. But understand that when you make your move and when you make your move, either dribble or no dribble, no matter what happens next, it has to be to the rim. Now, if you want to go straight up for like a, just a little quick short shot, that's fine, too, if you want to mix those two up. But I would always suggest. If I was your coach, first move, always to the rim, save the short or mid shot for the absolute play. And what, when, when I say absolute play, I mean this, all good against everything. For instance, if they're expecting you to go to the rim, guess what? When you make that move, they're going to drop back. They're going to cheat back and go to the rim. You go up, boom, ice cream. Next time you say, well, he might go up now and take the shot. Now what I do, I make my move. Guess what? They're moving into me. Foul, maybe an and one. Range Rover, all good, all wood. <laughs> Range Rover, all wood, all good. You know what I mean? <laughs> so hopefully this helps you with another add-on to that particular move from low post offense. I'm definitely going to talk about a couple of more. Hopefully this helps you. Again, I appreciate the feedback so much and appreciate the questions so much. Hopefully they're really, really helping you guys. Um, I can't wait to see some of these moves happen this season. If they are helpful, we can definitely talk further about them. Again, any other questions you got, reach out to your boy. Give me a shout. Let me know if I said something that might have been confusing and I need to straighten it out for you because I know I'm kind of trying to I'm trying to crush it in here in just these few minutes, trying to make it happen again. All I can do is say thank you. Appreciate all y'all. Stay safe for me. And whatever you do, never, ever let Barney Rubble borrow your car. Like I need to talk to somebody. Thank you for listening to Maestro. Thank you again for checking out Maestro. Drop a tag below and give us a piece of your mind. See you next time. Well, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day.